So here's the low pH triggered conformational change. And one way of describing it from the point of view of the monomer is that the HA2 part turns itself inside out. That is, the part of HA2, and perhaps it's easier to see in this representation with colored segments, the part of HA2 that's on the outside in the trimer, which is red and then merging into blue, is on the inside after the conformational change. And the part that's on the inside, green and yellow, turns around and comes up the outside. This structure is most simply described as a trimer of hairpin conformations. There's a fair amount of twisting and turning at the turnaround of the hairpin, but fundamentally you can think of this as three polypeptide chains that begin up here with the purple arrow which represents the fusion peptide. It's not represented here since this is based on a crystal structure. Comes down and then turns around and comes right back up to the transmembrane segment which would follow the uh, yellow arrow. So the hemagglutinin then undergoes two irreversible changes in the course of its maturation and exposure to low pH because indeed the conformational change I just showed you is irreversible. If you then neutralize, you don't go backwards. And that's because of the first irreversible change, which is the cleavage of a peptide bond. That now means that the structure we see, which is very stable if you keep it at pH 7, soluble flu hemagglutin and can hang around for months or years stably in the laboratory. But if you expose it to low pH very, very rapidly, it rearranges as shown in that rearrangement doesn't go backwards, and it doesn't go backwards because there's no way of re-knitting that peptide bond since this structure is actually not the lowest free energy state. It's just there's a very high barrier here that's lowered when uh, protons bind. And it is that second change and the free energy recovered from that second conformational change that is coupled to the process of membrane fusion.